This episode of Variants is brought to you by Truebill. What's up, my comic comrades? Thor Love and Thunder is right around the corner. And as a tradition around here, it's time to look at the characters appearing in the film. Because... That's how we roll. So with multiple versions of Thor and or varying power levels potentially appearing in this movie due to the multiverse, we're gonna kick off the festivities with a look at the most powerful versions of Thor to appear to date. With that said, let's dive right in. Leading things off, we have not Odin's son, but someone else worthy of Mjolnir and able to possess the power of Thor, that being Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill is easily the second most popular character to wield Thor's hammer and possess the power of Thor. In fact, he's so worthy of Mjolnir that in his first story arc, he defeated Thor and then rightfully won Mjolnir for himself. But his honor wouldn't let him take the hammer from Thor, so Odin, seeing Beta Ray Bill's worthiness and integrity, and the fact that he truly needed a powerful weapon to defend his people, created him a new weapon, Stormbreaker, which is what Thor is currently wielding in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, its MCU origin is quite different from the comics. Anyway, when Beta Ray Bill wields Stormbreaker in the comics, he also possesses powers similar to Thor, putting Bill on par with Thor's strength and abilities. Because of this, Thor sees Bill as his equal, even saying in the recent Donny Cates run, when Bill and Thor were butting heads, that in the past they have fought and been equals. For Thor to admit that to himself, you know Beta Ray Bill is incredibly powerful, since Thor is one of the strongest heroes in Marvel. And there's one version of him that we're going to talk about later that's arguably the most powerful. Anyway, I'll end this segment with when Beta Ray Bill and Thor were both stripped of their powers, left to fight hand to hand with no enhancements, and Bill came out on top. So since Beta Ray Bill has proven he's more powerful than Thor without his powers, plus a plethora of other reasons, he's earned a spot on this list. Next up, we have Iron Hammer. Now, several of you might be saying, Iron Hammer? Who the hell is that? Well, he's an amalgamation of Thor and Iron Man given to us in the Infinity Warp Saga. Basically, after Gamora got the Infinity Stones, she sealed the souls of the universe within the Soul Gem. She then folded the universe in half, merging every soul with another, resulting in the creation of Warp World. It's a pocket dimension where history was rewritten, giving us amalgamations of characters we've known for years, one of which being a merger between Iron Man and Thor. His real name is Stark Odinson, and for the sake of simplicity, all you really need to know is Iron Hammer takes the genius of Tony Stark and the strength of Thor, merging them into one character and giving us one of the most powerful versions of Thor we've ever seen, hence him being on the list. We didn't see a whole lot of this character only getting a two-issue miniseries called Infinity Warp's Iron Hammer. And in this series, we see him easily defeat Malekith, who now wields new versions of the Ten Rings. But I think just saying Iron Man-Thor hybrid tells you all you need to know about how powerful this guy is. Another incredibly powerful version of Thor that not many people might consider is the time Superman wielded Mjolnir and Captain America's shield giving us thor -El. By the way, if you weren't aware, back in 2003, Marvel and DC teamed up to give us this crazy four-issue crossover series titled Avengers JLA, allowing us to see Earth's Mightiest Heroes and the world's greatest heroes battle it out and later team up to fight together. Anyway, throughout the series, we see the JLA and the Avengers eventually join forces to defeat the villain Krona. In issue four of the series, the Man of Steel himself ends up wielding Captain America's shield and Mjolnir. Once Superman catches the hammer, he says, oh my lord, the power, never felt so, never would have guessed. Got to maintain the momentum. He then uses his own godlike power with Thor's god power to help save the day. So yeah, there's not much more to say about this. For one, it was short-lived, lasting only like two or three pages. And two, what is there left to explain? Superman alone is already known as the most powerful superhero in all of comics, so add the power of Thor on top of that, and he's on a whole nother level, which is why thor -El had to be mentioned. So here's a familiar story for you. I stopped for gas on the way into the studio this morning, and it cost me almost a hundred bucks to fill my tank. But it's not just gas. We all know everything is getting more expensive lately, so it's more important now than ever in our lifetimes to manage our finances well. And that, my people, is exactly where Truebill comes comes in strong. This incredible subscription tool acts as a personal finance manager by helping you track your expenses, negotiate and potentially lower your bills, easily cancel unwanted paid subscriptions, and grow your savings all in one place. For instance, you know those small subscription services you sign up for that never really use but keep forgetting to cancel because you're always busy? Come on, I know I'm not the only one. Well, Truebill securely identifies those monthly charges and lets you cancel those subscriptions with just the push of a button. No more hunting through websites trying to find their hidden cancel instructions. Truebill will just do all the busy work for you. And while that's amazing, all by itself, Truebill offers so much more. Now, if you're anything like me, you're also very careful about what companies you share your personal financial information with. But you can have peace of mind with Truebill because they use the same security protocols that banks use, and they don't store or sell your online banking information. So you can be sure your personal information is private and fully encrypted. But don't just take our word for it. Go to truebill.com forward slash variant or click our link in the description to try Truebill for free and unlock even more features with Truebill Premium. 
You can thank us later. Okay, next up on the lineup of most powerful versions of Thor, we have a more recent version of Thor that was incredibly powerful, and that's when Thor became a Herald of Galactus in Donny Cates' Thor run, giving us Herald of Thunder Thor, or Cosmic King Thor. Simply put, it's King Thor imbued with the power cosmic. Remember earlier when I referenced Thor saying to Beta Ray Bill, in the past you and I have fought and been equals. This will not be that. Well, it was Herald of Thunder Thor who said that to Bill, and for obvious reasons, Thor possessing the power cosmic gave his already incredible power a huge power boost. He easily defeats Beta Ray Bill and then shatters his hammer Stormbreaker as a big F you. Saying, do you believe me now? I told you, I warned you. That all went down in Thor issue three. But it doesn't end there. In issue six, Thor then decides to use his newfound powers to kill Galactus. You know, the person who imbued Thor with the power cosmic in the first place and one of the strongest entities in all of Marvel? Yeah, Thor just chucks his hammer at him with the power cosmic saying, I sentence you to death. Killing him in a single blow. And it still doesn't stop there. In the same issue, just a few pages later, Thor proceeds to kill the Black Winter. To put that in perspective, we all know Galactus as the Devourer of Worlds. Well, the Black Winter is the Devourer of Universes, and its herald was actually Galactus. So the Black Winter is on a whole other level above Galactus, and Thor easily defeated it with his Cosmic Thunder and Lightning. This is actually one of my favorite versions of Thor because, again, it's Thor with the power Cosmic. That's just all kinds of awesome. And the writing Donny Cates gave to go along with this Thor is brilliant. And just really pushed how powerful this Thor is. Moving on, we have another powerful version of Thor that's also from Donny Cates' Thor run, in issue 22 to be exact. In this story, Thor's hammer has become sentient, infected by the Mangog. Mjolnir wounds Odin, but before he dies, he tells Thor, I have been selfish. When you took the throne, I had so much more I wanted to do. I wanted your mother to see me again. I wanted to be strong. And so, I held back. Thor asks, what are you saying? I do not understand. And Odin then says, the Odin Force, boy. It cannot be given in full until I am gone. And then gives Thor the full power of the Odin Odin Force dying in the process. Obviously, his father dying pissed off Thor immensely, but it did give him the power he needed to defeat Mjolnir. Thor then says, Mjolnir, you have killed in my name, brought misery to my home. You have taken my father. Now we put the hammer down, as we see a fully powered Odin Force Thor donning new golden armor. Then in issue 23, we see this fully powered Odin Force Thor completely decimate the Mangog essence of his hammer with ease. Literally blasting Odin Force from his hands before shattering the hammer on the ground, quite literally bringing the hammer down. Needless to say, this version of Thor is ruthless and looks awesome. I mean, it's Thor with the full power of the Odin Force. It doesn't get much more powerful than that besides the two versions of Thor that are up next. Now we have Phoenix Force Old King Thor. Old King Thor is known to be one of the most powerful variants of Thor known. Case in point, Old King Thor survived the complete destruction of Asgard and every other god, as well as the destruction of Earth. He also killed Galactus, Gore the God Butcher, and a crap ton of other powerful enemies. Then after inheriting the full power of the Odin Force from his father, it was apparently renamed the Thor Force. So Old King Thor all by himself is a bamf of a character, and for me, is one of the best future takes on a legacy character ever. But believe it or not, his power only got elevated even more in Thor issue 6, when he was fighting a future version of Doctor Doom who possessed the powers of Iron Fist, Starbrand, Doctor Strange, and Ghost Rider. This gave us one of the most powerful versions of Doctor Doom ever, like OP to the max. So how was Old King Thor supposed to beat Doom. Well, it's simple, by being imbued with the Phoenix Force. As we see Old King Thor engulfed in the Phoenix Force, the comic says, and so the Firebird was reborn yet again, with a heart full of lightning and a fist full of burning Uru. As the mighty Thunderbird, King Phoenix, God of Fire. This gave us one of the most powerful versions of not only Thor, but of any Marvel character ever. Also, can we take a second to appreciate that not only has Thor been imbued with the power cosmic, he was also imbued with the Phoenix Force. This dude just freaking merges with all the most powerful entities and energy energies in the universe. And last up, we have arguably the strongest version of Thor to date, that being Rune King Thor. Thor became Rune King Thor in Thor issues 80 through 85, which was a tie-in to the disassembled storyline. We'll probably break down the origins of how Thor became Rune King Thor in a different episode, but for now, we're just going to focus on his power. As Rune King Thor, Thor is powered by the Odin Force and the Norse runes, which are ancient Asgardian runes that give Thor the power to see the past, future, and even the ability to manipulate the present. But let's just break down the powers Rune King Thor has. Of course, he has the Odin Force and Rune Magic, which makes him nigh omnipotent, but going further, he also has the ability to warp reality. Universal manipulation, cosmic energy manipulation, subatomic manipulation, space-time manipulation, soul manipulation, matter manipulation, telepathy, mind control, immortality, invulnerability, god-tier stamina and strength, teleportation, light-speed flight, nigh omniscience, nigh omnipresence. What I'm saying is, he's a god amongst gods at this point, known as the most powerful Thor that has ever been for obvious 
obvious reasons. The question is, will Rune King Thor or some version of him appear in Thor Love and Thunder? Maybe Chris Hemsworth Thor levels up to defeat Gore. I guess we're going to find out next week. But there you have it, friends, several of the most powerful versions of Thor to ever hit the pages of a comic book. The top three are definitely in there, but what do you guys think of these incredibly powerful versions of Thor and the moments where he became severely OP? Let us know in the comments. And that's going to bring today's Thor episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this video, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment. It always helps us grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.